All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Trevor. I'm with Market Delta, and this is a special webinar we have today with Anthony. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, stop orders, and he's got some other information to share on uh, the Edge course and uh, how all this stuff relates. Um, just for a little background, um, I, Market Delta. I started Market Delta just about 13 years ago. And uh, Anthony came into the picture. We we met not long after that, so um, we've had a long, long relationship. I've known him for many years, and uh, it's been a privilege to work with him much more closely over the last uh, three or four years uh, on the products and stuff like that. So he's uh, he's certainly somebody who um, has a lot of credibility, and that meant a lot to me. And somebody who knows the markets and um, trades and just really really gets it so anyway I don't want to take up too much of his time but I certainly wanted to give him a nice nice introduction and just let you know it's a real real treat to have him here with us today so with uh, one one thing is just hold any questions I think till later on unless he asks some to be posted but uh, I'll be answering them uh, some but uh, other than that we'll, we'll present all the questions to him a little bit later on so thanks all right, Trevor, thanks. We appreciate you guys coming. I'm going to keep the webcam on. I'll put it back on, right? I'm going to shut it off now as I do the screen share, and then I'll put it back on when we get a Q&A. Like Trevor said, I'll do. Uh, you could ask questions if you want during the chat, but if you don't get an answer as I'm presenting, don't get offended. I'll answer them at the end. We'll leave time open for that. I don't give these long-winded presentations, right? We'll keep them short and sweet and give you a lot of content. We'll tell you about the community we created. But there's a couple things that if you don't get anything out of this webinar, if you get one or two things that are important, you'll really like it and you'll be happy that you came. Um, but I don't, now I got it goes on two hours and talks about something and beats it up. It's all about simplicity. Simple is not easy, but it makes it easier. And most people start down the wrong path first. I was blessed, absolutely fortunate to be from Chicago, start on the floor, I'll tell you that in a second. I didn't have to do an online search to find help. And everybody needs help. Like I said during a little pre-webinar banner banter we were going back and forth with, I don't care if you've made millions of dollars or you want to make millions of dollars and haven't made a dollar yet, you've been doing it for five or ten years, everybody needs to understand you never stop learning. The guys who make money throughout my career, we understand that and being around other guys who are like-minded, a lot of people don't. But let's get going here. What I'll do is stop the webcam and just have my screen share. Real quick though, sound okay? You see the screen? We're good to go? All right, thank you. So where are the stops? Let me first start this thing off with something that a lot of people, I don't know if you've ever been to any of my webinars before, if you have, you're going to see this next slide or two, next picture, but kind of what to expect out of the next half hour, 40 minutes. Why markets do what they do in a sense, what a prop firm is, a couple quick slides about how this is the professional venue of, of day trading or trading in general, a story about that we call baby birds get a kick out of it, but it's very true, and then stops and how they create support resistance. We'll talk about the MD Edge, the Market Delta Edge community we created, and we'll get into a Q&A after that. So again, got questions, we'll answer them. So this is the image I'm talking about might be familiar. It's my father on the left, this is me on the right, my brothers are in the middle. The reason why I'm showing you this image is he always told us growing up, if you know how, you guys will have a job, but if you know why, you'll be the boss. It always resonated with me. And so when I pull, get into this business, I think if you only know how, all you'll end up doing is donating in this business. And you'll end up donating to those who know why. So it's really important to know why markets do what they do in that dynamic. How did I start? This isn't a boring uh, bio on Anthony Drager, but I'm from the floor. I got a job when I was 17. I got back down on the floor back in 1996. I was an ARB clerk. Took pit trading classes. Became a member of the Chicago Board of Trade in 1999 and a pit trader thereafter. I couldn't make any money though. 
I was failing. My dreams were coming to an end, and I'm like, there's these whispers of electronic trading back in the late 90s. And I'm like, who the heck is doing it? Where is the office of people who are career traders doing it? And so when you tend to ask the right questions, you get the right answers. And so what happened was I get introduced to what's called a risk manager, what's called a prop firm or proprietary firm. And he's telling me, well, and I'm like, well, what is this? What do you guys do? And he says, we take you, and it's a picture of me, we put you around other guys that we've taken and th that are making money and trading. We give you a workstation, which is what? Some monitors and a computer, okay? And we work a percentage split out. You make money, we get half, you get half. And so I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty interesting. Maybe now I'm finding out guys who are doing this. It was all electronic, and it was just European markets, the Eurex exchange, big exchange in Germany. Pioneer trading on a computer before the NYSE, CME, Board of Trade, anybody else. So it was really important that you knew the venue of where guys were doing it. So he tells me, and that's the risk manager, he says, Anthony, I let you know what was, what was really neat is that he was from the same neighborhood as me, so he liked me. And he's like, I can't hire you though, I'm not the owner, he's going to be here next week, why don't you come back? And he might hire you right out of the interview, because I think that you know you got what it takes. So I started asking myself in the week that I left, I'm like, do I want this job if I get offered it? So I asked my dad, I said, Dad, what if they offer me the job? What do you think? He says, well, next time you go to the office, he says, look at the cars in the parking lot. And if they're nice cars, you want the job, they're making money. Such a simplistic answer. And I'm like, yeah. So I go back, cars were nice, Mercedes, SUVs, BMWs. And I'm like, go through the interview. Owner's asking me questions. I could tell he's taking a liking to me. And he's an ex-pitch trader. In fact, he was still trading in the pit, but also on the screen. And so he asks me one final question. He said, I got one last question for you. What makes you think you could do this? And I'm thinking, wow, this is an important question because he, he purposely left it to the end. And I said, well, because I'm putting myself around people who are doing it, and I think that's what's going to lead to my success. And so he goes, that's exactly what I want to hear. He goes, you got the job. He says, you got to remember something. He goes, in order to turn the corner in this business and to have any kind of light bulb moments, you got to put yourself around guys that are doing it and also guys who are trying to do it. That's important. If you're going to do it on your own, it's going to take a lot longer if you ever get to any consistency. He says, that's what I want, consistency. I don't want flash in the pants. I don't care what your best day is. I want your best month. And so that was the right answer, right? It was just a knee-jerk answer, but that was the answer, putting myself around as you were doing it. So that brings me to a couple things he said after I started. Now remember, this is still a prop owner talking. He said, number one, being right doesn't matter, making money does. I remember him one day saying, if you're not wrong a lot, you're fired. Who says that as an owner of a company, right? So the next thing he always said was, remember, if you sell it, if you have to sell it, or after you sell it, you have to buy it. And I'm thinking, that makes sense. That kind of clicked for me. This is early on. And it made me come up with the saying that's resonated with a lot of people that goes, after you buy it, you're a seller. After you buy it, you're a seller. Or after you sell it, you're a buyer. Meaning after you open a position, you've got to cover that position. I don't care if you're going to cover it in three seconds or three years. You have to get out. Hopefully for a profit, but you have to get out. So remember that. After you buy it, you're a seller. So is everybody else. So that takes me to this baby bird story. Put the kids away for this story. There's no swear words or anything else, but this is a risque story. Someone gets really hurt in this story. Retail traders are like baby birds, helpless in a nest. I'm going to tell you that right now. Non, and sometimes I felt throughout my career helpless, right? But retail traders, non-professionals, always are baby birds and don't even realize it. 
Okay, so those are the non-professionals in this metaphor. Mommy bird is the market. Now stay with me on this one. When the baby birds have to get out of a position, the market starts coming back down to their price, they start to get excited. Mommy bird's got the worm, they're ready to get fed, and all of a sudden, Mr. Hawk comes by and rips mommy's head off. Mommy bird is no longer alive, she's dead, and, she, and the hawk runs away with it. The hawk is the pro. There's no more mommy bird. The hawk is the pro in this, in this uh, metaphor. You got to remember that that's how markets work. It's about eating what we kill, but also realizing that you can't be the baby bird. You have to understand how and where they're at. This is segueing us into stops and the whole title of the um, webinar. So next slide. Remember, the slides go a little slower than the uh, my voice, so I'm trying to gauge it properly. Let me explain it a little, maybe more, how that metaphor fits more realistically. Say you're trading the S&P minis, and I assume most of you guys are. I don't care if you trade a stock, any mini, whatever. After you buy it yourself, what does that mean? Let's say this black line in here is where you get long. So what do you do to get long? You have to buy it, right? So you buy it, but unbeknownst to you, so do so many other people. Unbeknownst to you, there's a lot of people long at this particular line in the sand. And all the market does is go down against you. So all you do is, is, is take heat. You got long, and you're saying, man, if I would have just waited five minutes, I'd have bought a better price. It goes right against you. How do you feel? Like crap. Well, how do you feel if the market starts ro uh, rolling back up, starts coming back to your entry? pain starts to subside. I don't care if you exit, but I guarantee you, you have the inclination to say, oh, thank God. Let me out for a break even. I'll never do this again. You know, and you're feeling better. You're the, you're the baby bird, however, in the nest, right? And mommy's getting close to feeding you. But you got to remember, there's a lot of sellers that are stacked because there's a lot of people who got long and felt the pain. There's a lot of baby birds in this example that are going to make it tough for this particular price or in this particular example to go through all that selling because so many people got trapped in longs. So the market tends to do what? Rotate back up right to that line in the sand and then wham, head back south. Almost feeds you, hawk comes, takes your mom's head off and it's gone. And there's that sense of emotion, right? And all these sellers just say, ah, screw it, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, and they chase the market lower. So this is the whole after you buy it, you're a seller, and how that dynamic fits, you know, in real life. Now let's look at a chart. Oh, one other thing, this saying. Profits come from other traders' losses. That's very important. I'm going to tell you why. stops are used, our majority, and this is a quick slide, are people exiting position. I know you could use stops to enter, forget about that. Most people use it to exit, all right? Majority of stop orders are used to exit trades and to exit that trade for a loser. You're usually emotional when you have losers on, right? I know I am. So if a lot of people have losers on, there's a lot of emotion, and if they're all clustered in one area, and there's a lot of stops clustered in one area, that's a losing position, there's a lot of emotion you can attach to that area, period. That's very important to visualize. So in other words, it's where you're wrong. I don't care if you're in third grade and, and, and you raise your hand to answer a question, and you're dead wrong, and all the kids laugh at you. You feel like crap. Everybody does. As humans, we're not wired to be wrong good. We're not wired to handle being wrong. That's why trading is tough, tougher for some people because you're always battling against the resistance of being human. We hate being wrong and we love being right. That takes me back to what the prop owner said. I don't care if you're right. I just care about making money. So this is what stops are used for primarily, to exit trades and mostly losing trades, okay? So let's go to this chart image. Then I'm going to take you to a, to a uh, this actually was from today, 
S&P minis. Forget about the price. Forget about anything else. We're going to go to a real chart, not a real chart, but the uh, a live chart and talk about this with a different view of it. But just simplicity here. This isn't you. You guys are your own indicators. Period. You're the, your own indicators. Most of you guys have probably been down the path of indicators, finding ways to to judge where the market's going to go. But if you just build a little bit foundational stuff of the right concepts, you become that indicator. Instinctively, you can't predict. Now, look at this chart for a second. You could draw rectangles in real time. Obviously, this isn't real time. But you could draw these things visually on a chart all the time. That's where a fight took place. You see the little hull in the box? Let me put a pen on this. Hold on a second. You see this little hole in the box? Market leaks through it. Now, the hole could have been up here. We don't know that. But we do know that when it does fire through there, man, there must have been a lot of cell stops there. Just keep that in mind. Now, let's go to the next box. Consolidation, a fight, and right in here, there's a hole, cell stops. You go over. You could draw this as a fight. Market rallies up in there. You could go here and say, oh, cell stops in here and so on. Now, here's what's interesting, Interesting, and we're going to tie it back to the baby bird metaphor. Let's say, let's just focus on this congestion, this fight in here. That's it. I don't care if you're long or short. All I care about is that there's always open positions in a market. Short, medium, and long term, there's always longs, there's always shorts, or bulls and bears, and there's always people that are swearing, yelling, because their position isn't working, or whatever. So the baby birds in this in this image here that are long, I'm sorry, short, got to get that right with this whole slide won't make any sense. Everybody in this congestion, all these birds reflect people who are short. And buy stops, right, you have to put a buy stop in to cover a short position. All the buy stops inside that yellow circle came out, but some baby birds didn't catch it. What happens when you just miss trying to get out, especially for a loser? You're mad. Sometimes you chase it, but you're mad. And if the market, if the market comes back down to your price, you're looking to do what? You're looking to now cover where you missed it. Remember, you're a buyer because these birds are short. If you're a buyer and the market runs up like this, follow my pen, comes back down to feed the birds, all of a sudden they're not getting filled, they're not getting filled, and the birds just kind of chase it up and the market runs away. That's why the market runs away from support or resistance if you have good support resistance. This is going to be your best, most accurate assumptions of where lines in the sand are or support resistance you could ever find. Not moving averages, not stochastics or Fibonacci or profiling or anything else. It's where people are stuck and where the hell they're going to get out, where they missed, where they're, where they're yelling and screaming, and all the rest. And this dynamic of where you could find and have accurate assumptions of where stops are. So number one, I'm going to show you this look, this exact same chart, on a footprint in a second, and, a foot in, and explain what that means. But this is what you have to look at. You have to say, these are fights in the market, these congestion areas. What does it mean to start to understand where longs or shorts are wrong, where they are wrong? I'm going to go a step-by-step -step process in a second, but first, let's go to this image, but in and on a footprint. That's this. No, it's not this. It's this one. There we go. Let me take that off. Let me blow this, guys. This is the image you just looked at. All right. These are the baby birds that got stuck short. This is where they tried to come in and buy it, and this is where they chased it up. Okay? Make sense? Well, do you see this big green bar right in here that shoots up north? You see that? Let's take a look inside of it. Let's see if we could find out if there was tempo that we could mark where these guys came out and, and uh, have a better sense of 
what stops look like when you start to chart time and sales. That's what the footprint is. Just charting time and sales. That's it. Forget about this chart at the bottom. I'll tell you what that means in a second. So I open up the candlestick just with the wheel of my mouse. This is what the big tall green bar looks like in a footprint. Do you see how it gets thin and gets kind of the greens are stacked and gets a little thin, meaning the volume is light in here, lighter there than it is above it and below it in a sense, and it skips. Well, when you get the market to show light volume, and this is a directional bar, remember, this is an up bar, and it gets thin like that, that means the tempo picked up, period. And so there are buy stops that came out. If you couldn't predict that they were going to come out there, you could at least see that they came out there by a thin spot that we call them, and you could draw a line over to, I got to get rid of, you could draw a line over to potential near-term support, which it teacups down, bottoms out, and rallies away from. So that's what it looks like in a footprint. But let me show you more examples. This is from today. It took me about five seconds to find examples. You don't have to go far because this happens over and over and over again. Take a look at this thin spot to get a more accurate read. Do you see, you can't just say, well, at the bottom of a breakout or at the top of the breakout, those are the stops. No, not always. Look at this one. See this consolidation fight? You draw the rectangle around here. This is where bulls and bears duked it out. And all of a sudden, the market gets fast right there. Because you see this thin spot? If you guys could see in the red, the red. When the, red, when the reds and the greens stack on each other, that means quick selling are coming in or quick buying is coming in. When it's red, quick selling. So let's draw a line across from where this thin spot is, and it comes in around 90, 91, and that's where it topped out right in there and there and rotated back down here, here, and rotated back south, 90-91. So this isn't coincidental. It's about recognition and getting ahead of those that you trade against and not being stuck with them. Why is this important? Because you guys have to put yourself in a position of other traders. Do you ever, some of you, this would really, this will really click with because of your experience, but Here's what happens. Here's a general quick story of most people's journey, unless they were from a prop environment or a trading floor environment. And I'm not smarter than anybody in this webinar today watching live or on recording in the future. I just happened to grow up and be fortunate to be around guys who knew what they were doing, and I don't have to shake off a lot of bad habits. But a lot of people accumulate bad habits, have to unlearn something and then learn it a different and or the right way when you find information like this. But most people, they'll learn a bunch of stuff. They can't turn it into success. So the last thing, next to the last thing they say is, oh, it must be the psychology of the market or it must be my psychology. i got to fix my what's in between my ears. And so they'll take books or read books, take classes on how to manage your emotion. Guess what? That doesn't matter. You have to know what you're doing. You're not going to be successful managing your emotion. You might get better managing your emotion, but you have to get good and successful and consistent. You got to, It's like a, a surgeon. Do you want a surgeon when you're, when you're flatlining on the operating table to do breathing exercises and calm himself down? You want the, the, you want the guy to know what he's doing when the you-know-what's hitting the fan. You're a trader, short, long, medium term. You've got to know what you're doing. And you've got to be able to predict, get out of a prediction, get out of an idea, get into an idea, and diligently react like every... And you might think, wow, there's a lot of information to absorb. No. Think about all the information as humans that we absorb when we drive a car. Think about that. And we're texting and listening to the radio, and we're still able to drive a car. Someone slams in their brake, on their brakes in front of us. We don't have to think, well, what do I do? Where's the brake? Should I change lanes? All the data we've absorbed, we don't give ourselves enough credit for. Keep it simple, all right? Keep it simple and look for these moments where markets have buy stops above 
or sell stops below. That's the lingo I want people to get used to. Buy stops above, sell stops below. Where are they? What could I do for them? How do I keep myself from being on the wrong side? Now, let's go back to the slides. And just take this step by step, even further simplifying it. First of all, visualize or draw boxes around the fight congestion. Keep it simple. Secondly, put yourself in the shoes of longs or shorts. This is what I mean when people go and they try to learn about psychology. They always want to worry about how they're thinking. Forget about how you're thinking. Try to figure out how other traders with open positions are feeling. If you are long, and you say to yourself, damn, I'm long, and if this market gets below this price, I'd get out there for sure. I'd get out right here. You might be able, not be able to see that pen of yellow. Well, if it's a no kidding, I'm going to get out there of a long position, for you, it's probably like that for many others that are long. You don't have to be long or short to put yourself and trick your mind as to where the heck you'd get out if you were wrong and long, if you were wrong and short. So visualize and draw boxes around the fight, but also put yourself in the shoes of longs or shorts. Third, where would they be nervous? Is there an obvious place that the bulls are absolutely dead wrong and we're going to get bearish below this moment? There's two words, if then. If this happens, then this is going to happen, period. If that happens, then this should happen. If you're not thinking along that progression, you need to start to. But where are they going to be nervous? Fourth, mark where the stops are going to get elected. Practice what you think is going to happen and then see if you're right. That's how you strip randomness out and stop using SIM, and this isn't to everybody, but I tell my community of guys all the time, don't use SIM to, to, to try to get profitable and test a strategy. Use SIM to lose money. You want to lose money on SIM, and then you know it's time to go real. Not when you're making money on SIM and then go real. No, you use SIM to practice drills and exercises. That's how you use a demo environment, not to try to test a strategy. This is a big boys game. We're hawks not mommy birds or baby birds, so you're going to have to risk some money at some point. That's how you test the strategy, but SIM is important for drills and exercises. So mark where the stops get elected, and then talk it through with other like-minded people. But you've got to put yourself around like-minded people, you know? And that's what I did. I was failing as a floor trader, asked the right questions about who was doing this for a living, found myself hired by a prop firm, April of 2000, and started making money right away. Because I was wrong, guys doing it. We'd have weekly meetings about, you know, equity traders have weekly meetings, treasury guys have weekly meetings, but you talk through things, and that's where you learn an incredible amount of stuff in an effortless way. And it's important. And it segues me into, well, here, I want to show you a, before that segue, before that segue, let me, let me show you the chart again. And just, this wasn't part of my plan. This is kind of like a bonus, a bonus drill, if you will. This is what you need to do. You need to kind of, in the morning, you wake up, you're like, well, what do the overnight markets do? Well, wake up five minutes earlier and say, I don't want to know what the overnight markets want to do. I want to see if I can predict it. So look at the far right of my chart, far right, all right? I see the market, and I go one click at a time. And I say, oh, this market's chopping around. All right, all right, what's going on? Ooh, it's identifying a consolidation. I think, oh, before that chart, that not, I think the market's going to get bearish below here or bullish above there. Create real time for yourself. And then when you're right, it doesn't feel, wham, this thing breaks. You don't feel like it's random. That's where the longs were saying, uncle, 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 uncle. What happens when longs say uncle? There's a lot of selling. If there's a lot of longs saying uncle, there's a lot of sellers. A lot of sellers, where's price going? Probably down. That's how you review 
what happened overnight, then take a look at it. But practice predicting without trying to implement a strategy on set and take things to their rawest forms. I don't care if you're, if you're going to ever trade short term, you got to know what the guys on the ground are doing. I'm telling you, it's going to highlight great locations for your time frame. All right, that was a bonus. Let's go back to the uh, like-mindedness with other people. All right, I'll tell you guys and show you guys what we've done to, and it's actually helped me immensely. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why I did this. All right, so you get a sense of how you could predict where stops are, and then what they look like with thin spots. Someone asked me a question I think I answered. I just happened to see it. Mark, what is the thin spot implying? I think I answered it after you asked it, but in case I didn't, it's implying the speed of the markets picking up or stops are being let out. Okay? Stops are being triggered or elected. That's what it means because the tempo is picking up. And if you've got a cluster of stops, buy stops that are going to be elected, it goes up fast or, dies, or down fast if they're sell stops. Make sense? All right, let's go to what we've built with this intention, and that is content plus community. What does it equal? How do you take this stuff and start applying it with other things? I'm going to give you guys a video. Don't give it yet, Trevor. Let's do it at the end. But stick around. This is not... Um, it's only like a six minute video that kind of covers what I did but with better graphics and everything at the end. And it's the title is where the stops started, okay? And it'll be a great six minute review of what I just went over. It really will. And it's going to take an hour to watch it. You'll like it. So we created a community with content and structure, and it's called the Market Delta Edge. And I did it the same way, not only how I was trained, how I seen everybody else being trained. Beginners, people that don't know anything about markets, it's covered. Most of you guys could skip over something like track one and track two for beginners and intermediate people. But if you don't know anything about futures and why people trade it, fine, the information is there. Bids, offers, things that are should be elementary, they're covered. Then we get into this third track of advanced education that's delivered with an ebook and 11 lessons. But the 11 lessons aren't hours long. They're shorter videos that get to the point so you can watch them a few times. You read a few paragraphs, you watch a video. Read a few more paragraphs so you're not getting bored. That's track three. Well, what happened was, I don't want to bore you guys with the history of how we developed this, but we said last year when we launched this product, okay, last year almost to the day, that we were going to do weekly events for people that invested in this product. Every Tuesday, we were going to have a coaching session because in a prop firm, you meet. If you were in a physical office with other traders, which is what you need to get yourself into, you would meet. So every Tuesday at 11 Central, we meet, but we record the sessions, so there's over almost 50 one-hour, 90-minute sessions that cover a variety of topics all through last year. We call that track four. Then the most two unique tracks in the history of education is five and six. Five is like three, two to three minute clips of scenarios that actually took place on a dome, on a footprint, on a chart, real time with a voiceover. And there are instances like Someone would ask me, what does it look like when a big buyer comes in? I could tell you until I'm blue in the face. How about if I show you in two-minute clips two or three times? That's track five, these setup clips. Then six is what we added after we got started last year because we're always making sure people have the very best chance to do this. Team six, or team six, track six is what's called a team room. Not a trading room, don't confuse it with that. It's a team room. And what it is, a virtual office, period. If you guys were in a prop firm, what would you be around? You'd be around Bill on your left, Rich on your right, 
John behind you, you sit down and say, not type to them, you would talk to them. So in, in this team room, in this virtual office, you could talk in or listen. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Yeah, you know what? They just hit the bonds. A big buyer's been coming to the S&P. I'm looking at this level. Not people calling out trades. They're people keeping you aware of what matters. Hey, there's stops that just got let out at this price. and this. That's important because you need more eyes and ears on what matters, not more eyes and ears on, on what doesn't matter because that's the communities that are out there on what matters, like-minded people. So you got to start like we did in Chicago prop firms, and Chicago has dozens and dozens of prop firms in and around it because it's the futures capital. You can look up the one I came from, International Trading Group, also DE Trading, same company. We had two names, um, and there was two companies, either you traded under one, or, but it was the same company, ITG, International Trading Group, and it was in another northern suburb of Chicago. And if you don't know what a prop firm is, that's the venue of professional traders. So if you're trying to be a pro trader and you don't know where the venue is, it's like being a baseball player and you don't know where the New York Yankees play. Very important. What we do is not reinvent the damn wheel. We take what you know, we combine it with some executional knowledge, and that overlap is where your success lies. I got, I'll, I'll say a couple last things and we'll roll through what this promotion is and we'll jump onto some questions. But you guys buy cars, you buy houses, I guarantee you, you have a concept that you use. Why in the heck would you use it when you value the price of the S&P minis or oil or gold? When you buy a car, you have a technique and, and, and way to value price of a car, don't you? If you're not using those concepts, order flow and market relationships, you're not you're never going to consistently know where stops are or know what to do with them. You're not going to get in the market. Everyone's weakness in this webinar today is execution. When I'm trading poorly, it's because I'm executing poorly. Guys who have never made a dime trading or consistently, it's because they never learned to execute properly. Qualification, guys. Not where the market's going, when the market's going. How this is delivered is simple. Ebooks, videos, and most importantly, exercises. Not jumping jack exercises, but drills, easy drills. That's how some of the coaching sessions are done. Where you want to use, you want to be a master of your dome, here's a simple way to do it. You want to have a drill so you could get good at knowing where the stops are, here's a way to do it. Here, I'll give you an example. And these are these are the clip videos. You see how you see a dome in here and you see the charts and everything? You play it three minutes and it goes over a trading setup and what it looks like live, what it looked like live. Why I'm saying this is that I could teach you guys how to shoot. Someone could teach you how to shoot free throws. But if they're teaching you by throwing the ball at the rim like a baseball pitcher, you're not going to get good at shooting free throws, period. There's a technique. So here's the technique. Now here, now here's the drill. Shoot some free throws. But now you got a chance of being a good free throw shooter because the technique is right. People are throwing the ball at the rim like a baseball pitcher, and they think they're going to be a good free throw shooter. Not going to happen. So the edge, however, is not in this content. Yeah, the content's great, structured great. You learn it like you learn anything else. But the weekly set, the community is the edge. Putting yourself around people who are driven like-minded in weekly sessions and this virtual team room office. The weekly sessions are every Tuesday, virtual office is every day. I'm going to show it to you. I didn't plan on showing it, but I'm going to. See this right in here? This is the, you get this, you download it. Right now there's only a few guys in it because the markets are, the US markets are obviously closed. But what, what happens here is there's a break room, there's a conference room, and then the equity room is the most popular room. Most of you guys are ES traders. So you go in there and there's a dozen guys, sometimes more, talking about the market. Sometimes a little quiet, sometimes it's not, just like any old office would be. But this, this device or this um, download is on your desktop. In three clicks, you're talking to other people. 
You're not typing in a retail forum. You're not just tweeting. You're talking to guys. You develop a relationship. And and I had this. I'm not going to pull it out because I can't find it, quite frankly. But I had this. Everybody had sent me what they did for a living. Because what's really cool about the group that we created is they're pilots. They're doctors. They're ex-CEOs. They sold big companies. They're, they're CTOs. Um, they're very successful, driven individuals. And if you don't want to put yourself, who do you want to put yourself around? Guys like that who turn the corner and are trying to turn the corner, or do you want to put yourself around guys that are lazy, looking for a green arrow to make a decision? So that's how it's delivered. We can go to the website afterwards and tell you more about that. Here's the promotion that we have, and it's a trading technique the way we promote it. And it's about bringing in people who can make decisions. A lot of stuff, how many guys have paid for education? Let me ask you that question. I don't care what you paid for. How many guys have invested in education in the past? Everyone has to. I understand. I'm going to put the camera on for this because it's really important to me. I understand skepticism where most of the industry isn't great at teaching. But there's a lot of industries where most people stink at something. They're bad doctors, lawyers, and everything. You've got to remember that at some point, though, everybody hopes someone's out there teaching the right stuff that's going to give you the best chance to make it or else how are you going to learn it? I respect skepticism, especially when it comes to this business. That's why I tell people, I was lucky, blessed. I made my own luck. I made my, my you know, the decisions. I remember this, and I'll say this really quick and then go through this promotion. I remember that when I started doing real well, people know, right? The car you drive, the house you buy, and things like that. And a friend of mine said, man, Tony, they, most of my friends call me Tony, you're lucky. You got lucky being in that business. And I looked at him, first I got mad, then I said, yeah, it's good to be lucky. And I thought to myself, I'm the one that made the decisions to train myself, to put myself in that industry instead of going to bars and playing softball. I'm the one who put my rear end in a chair to trade electronic markets, right? So you make your own luck. But when someone tells you you're lucky, it's usually a compliment. Most courses could cost you ten or 20000 Here's how they cost you that much. Upsells. Upsell city, right? And... Next thing you know, you haven't learned a damn thing. And it'll put you around other people. So we're not selling it for that. These things take a delay between, they, between me saying it and them coming up. Most of the value, just the education, I shouldn't say this anymore, but in, in the past, we just had one, two, three. Now we've got tracks four, five, six. So there's ebooks and 11 video lessons in track three. And track four, just ongoing future live group coaching session, sells and sells on the website for $5,000. Okay? Today only, not today only, this is, this didn't update. Till Friday, I changed this and didn't update. Till Friday, we were just going to make it for today, but till Friday, I think 3.30 Central, let me get rid of this. You could do one of two things. You could pay $7.95 a month for three months and you're done. That's your total. That's the savings. The other thing you could do is make a one-time payment of $19.50. You save more than you, you invest in it. Now, let me leave you with a couple things we get to Q&A. First of all, also at the end of the week, that's right, Trevor, we included this. I forgot to, to bring this up. Also, you'll get unlimited access to group coaching classes. So you're not just going to get the live coaching classes from this Tuesday forward. All the ones we did last year that are in track four. Also, because the team room is separate and it and it's a it's a separate add-on, but in this re-grand opening, if you will, we're going to include it. Trevor, not right now, is going to put in some payment buttons in the chat if you're interested. This event only will do the bonus track six, which gives you access to this virtual office. And I'll, and I'll tell you something. If this program stunk, or if it was mediocre, even, 
do you think I'd want to see those people who bought it every Tuesday? Do you think I'd want them introduced to each other? You'd be the last person I'd want to see after you bought it and commingling clients that bought a product that was crap would be the last people I'd want you to talk to. So you got to understand the difference between this. This isn't about, well, who are you and what content do you have? It, that doesn't matter. What matters is, wow, he put me around guys that have went through content that seems like it makes sense, right? Compare, contrast, and order flow. And he doesn't, the commitment to people is amazing because it's like anything else. You never stop learning. You keep coming back, you meet, you feel like a group. So last year at this time, we said we were going to do it. We've done, you know, over 45 Tuesday sessions that are recorded, you'll have access to. We had to track five, all these setup clips, and then we put the virtual office, which has always been my vision. The reason why this is limited time is because... Just like a trader, you don't have forever to make a decision, right? You don't have to buy it, but do me a favor. Think about buying and investing in something that puts you around like-minded people. You're, it's very difficult to be alone and do it. So no matter where you start track-wise, the whole goal is this bottom portion, not reinventing the wheel, taking what you know, teaching you structure and how to execute. That's your overlap, all right? Before we get, let me put this back on the webcam. This is again Friday, I think, to the market closes. So about 48 hours, a little less than 48 hours. Trevor will put a payment button in there that's good till then. And uh, you'll be given an email explaining you how to start and everything else. Let me uh, address one thing that nobody's asked a question about, but team room hours, by the way, are all day. They get busy in the European session, obviously, and then U.S. markets, and then, as you could see earlier, hardly no one's in there after the close, which makes sense, right? Let me go back to a webcam and uh, talk to you about this, uh, this one point that's really important, and I want guys to th uh, pay attention. Now, nobody's asked me this question, and very rarely do I get asked this question, and that is, but yet I know it's on people's mind because... It was on my mind when I thought, should I buy, should I, should I give half my money away at this prop firm? I've spent, if you think a couple grand or five grand is expensive, I've spent over seven figures in 50-50 splits and then 25-75 split um, my next few years because it was a three-year contract 50-50. But you should be skeptical anytime you come into the question of, well, what the heck should I you know, if your trade's so great, Anthony, why why do you have to sell it? That's a question everybody should have, even though I don't get it. And because I would have it, quite frankly. Number one, I don't have to sell it. But number two, it reminds me, and the reason why I do it is the story of the prop owner that I started with. What happened was he had a partner before I was there. His partner, they had hired like seven or eight guys at the time and they were trading for him, and, and his partner says, hey, Dave, I don't want to hire any more guys. Why do we have to hire guys if we could trade? We're good. We're successful. And Dave looked at him and he said, listen, we can make more money and more success leveraging our intellectual capital, training guys, backing them, than we can make trading our own accounts, period. And his partner says, well, I, I'm out. I don't want to do it. So he bought him out, gave him a check for half the, the company, whatever it was at that point, now he was the sole proprietor of this proprietary firm. He went on to hire over 100 guys. I was number 18 or 19 in April of 2000. Over 100 guys with two offices. And he's worth over $100 million today with that success. He did exactly what he thought he could do, exponentially leverage his intellectual capital. So there's one or two ways to do it if, if, you, if you structure it right. You could back guys, which I don't, and I'm fair with guys that if, I'm not great at someone risking my money and maybe showing up late. I'm going to be unfair. I'm going to be mad and everything else. And so, because I tried it, and it's like maybe I'm not a good manager of someone who's managing my money, and I, it might be my weakness. But if you could put something together like we've done, 
structure it in a way that's automated, but yet you still touch people and truly adhere to a mission statement of, hey, I can't guarantee you guys will make money, but I could tell you you're going to have your best shot at the title. That's all I could say. You have your best shot at the title. You don't have to reinvent a system or learn a system. I'm not selling a system. If I had a system that worked 95% of the time, I tell people I wouldn't sell it to my mom. Not going to happen. It's a concept. He didn't have a system when I started at a prop firm. It wasn't a system. You know what they told me? If you see the first day, Ed was the back office. He said, "If you see something, trade it. This is how you buy it. This is how you sell this. How you use the dome." He so he showed me a little bit of functionality. Of the, it wasn't even a, a price ladder. It was an order book back then. But he uh, showed me functionality of that, and then he said, uh, "If you see something, trade it." Well, now I already knew how to trade a little bit because of my background from the floor, but. That was the extent of my initial education. But being around other guys, meeting with them, lunchroom conversation, uh, they had breakfast and lunch that was brought in, desk-to-desk -desk banter. That's why we did the team room, the virtual office, because it's like, how are you going to, if, if you're around a bunch of people like that you tweet with or a forum or some other way people try to reach out for a community, that's just not, just because you're in a community doesn't make it a good community, right? Just because you live in a neighborhood doesn't mean it's a good neighborhood. So you want to live and be around like-minded guys. And the way you separate that is who are these guys? What's their backgrounds? Um, and, and at some point, does someone know what they're talking about? You know. So that's my the way I would address that skepticism. I don't get it. But I would imagine people think that because, by all means, I would think that. I used to think that. If you're so good at it, why are you teaching it? Well, that's why we're doing it. We don't have to, but we're doing it because there's value and the fact that the story of my the prop owner, how to leverage what you know. And as long as you have that mission statement of giving guys their best chance, then that's what it's all about. All right, so let me answer some questions that maybe Trevor didn't get around to. Trevor, do you want to add something? Yeah, no, I was just going to um, put it, put the uh, questions. There's a few here. One was, um, well, I think you mentioned the days and the hours of the team room. I think you got that. The other one that just came in from Luca was, uh, what about the software you you use? Do we need that? Is it included? So it's, answer that. Yeah, it's not included. Like the uh, footprint charting and stuff, it's not included. It's a separate subscription. You don't necessarily like need it. Um, it's not like, well, if you don't have it, no, you won't be able to implement anything. So no, you don't have to have it, and it's not included. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're teaching you how to build a deck. There's more people that make a circular saw, but this is the better one, and here's why. So that's the best answer to that question. Uh, you want me to read them and, and answer them, Trevor, or do you want to? No, I mean, most of them I've got. Uh, okay, okay, one was uh, regarding the, um, he was asking, do you take a, this was from Greg, do you take a position when you were drawing a box around the consolidation? He says, are you taking a position in the box on the breakout or on a retest uh, to the thin spot? Well, here, it matters. I try. Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll take the retest. But here's what's that's really interesting about stops and, and near-term support resistance is what are the qualifiers with other markets? So this is part in part order flow, right, where orders are coming out and things. The other part of the concept, it's only a two-prong approach, order flow and market relationships. So if I've identified, Greg, that could you see my hand? So if I have identified that right in here, there are sell stops below, that means I'm bearish, right? And as it approaches this line, as it approaches where there are sell stops below, so say it's right here and I'm ready to hit it, and all of a sudden I see the Russell get slapped, or oil these days, which is a great corollary, get slapped. That gives me the impetus to say, get in. That's like the best indicator of all, if it's the right, stuff you're learning is a hand that comes out of the monitor and slaps you in the head and says, sell it, stupid. If I could invent an indicator like that, it would be that. Anticipating a breakout and a correlation, a corollary market helping me get in. Yeah, 
you could do me one favor, Trevor. Could you add that link that has the uh, the uh, bonus video? I think I entitled it, or one of those links that I sent you. Is it the webcast and bonus video, or the the other, just no. the straight YouTube video? The yeah, the YouTube video. All right. I this is a lesson that's on YouTube, and we'll take it down. I put it on there because this is an one of the many lessons that you'll get in track three. Remember, there's a bunch of lessons in track four, but this is just a five-minute video, kind of a nice, good summary and the bullet points of what we went over today. Give you another look at it. Watch it. It's five minutes. It's really important. I think Trevor just put it in. Yep. I just posted it there, guys. Yeah. But that's a great question, Greg. I'm glad that you uh, that you asked it because execution is everybody's weakness. Again, the team room is open technically all day. Are there people in it 24 hours? Of course not. We've got a few guys in the European Open. The bulk of guys, just like the markets, get there about 7, 8 in the morning central time when the U.S. markets start getting ready to fire up. And it stays pretty consistent till the U.S. close. All right, let me delete some of these. Someone's asking me about FX. This is a good question, whether it's Forex, gold, like not everybody trades the ES or oil or some of the markets we mentioned. A market is a market is a market. So if I had to trade T-shirts, I'd go to Target and I'd go to Walmart and see if I could buy some T-shirts at Target for 950 and drive down the street and sell them to Walmart for 1050 But if I couldn't compare the two, I would never know value. So it works for anything with a price attached to it. And you just got to make sure you got the data. If you got the data for those Forex markets, Joe, then, yeah, you'd be able to, to run the, the volume through the footprint. And One of the things I, I found from my experience of talking to people who trade different, whether it's Forex, futures, or stocks, is they wish they would have found futures first. I'm not trying to talk anyone to trade futures, but Forex is not as tran transparent as futures are and rigged sometimes. And I never traded it. This is what I've heard. I mean, for most every forex trader I've spoken to, and they really don't know that until they can compare it to something that's more transparent, or the futures. Yeah, Joe. So what I move my, I think your support resistance um, to new consolidation. Yeah, I think it's important to know where the, the previous fights were, and and uh, as a place to know a, a line in the sand and where the bodies are buried, so to speak. I mean, I could have went on. There's there's a few different concepts that tie all together. This is just one of them. I want you guys to understand that. Those are a bulk of the questions that I... Uh, okay, here's a few more. There's one from Jeffrey. You see the one that just came in? Yeah, hold on. All right, so this is something that will confuse people, and I'm glad Jeff asked. The team room is not the trading room. I also moderate with Trevor and uh, George, you'll hear as well, under Market Delta, a trading room, and we've been doing it for a few years. That's separate from the edge, separate from the team room. Team room is included. The team room is included in the edge uh, for the length of this uh, promo. The trading room is subscription, monthly subscription. And the, the thing is with the trading room is you, it's the, the best way to put it is the, it's the execution of the education. So that's what the trading room is. If you guys see that, you will. You'll be like, well, what's this? And just separate the two. The Edge has its own website. I'd encourage you to go to that website and, and uh, sign up. You want to do that. You want to post in that link that takes them to that form to sign up for the another webinar. It's only a 25-minute webinar, a couple other bonus videos. Trevor will pop in that link. Just fill out the form. It's it's free and gives you access to more stuff. Yeah. If you're interested. I'll do it right now. Here's that no. link. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you want me to post that link now or later? 
Uh, well, wait, let me answer some questions because these are good questions and everybody should be inter in, interested in some of these answers. I don't want you to fill out a form and not hear the answer because this is a good question by L. Are people talking over each other in the team room? Absolutely not. Here's what we've done to counter that. We have separate rooms, so if they get too big, guys are split. So that you can't have 50 guys in a room because that would happen. So if you looked at that, you still see my screen share, Trevor? Yeah. 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 If you looked at, here's what's cool. We haven't filled out other rooms, but here, look at this. Equities, energy. I'm pointing to it. Here's my energy, debt markets, metals. So we have different rooms to push guys into, just like any office would, because you wouldn't want to fill an office with too many guys. You you make the office bigger and expand. In fact, that's exactly what we did in the prop firm. Is you know continue to expand as more traders were hired. So that's how that. Good question though, because that can't happen. The whole purpose of this virtual office is to replicate the banter that happened in a prop firm. And there's ground rules like. We don't let guy. We don't want guys except for there's there's one or two guys that we don't mind talking about their trades, but it's not when you were in a prop firm. You didn't say, hey, I'm long 15 evens. I'm long. I'm gonna get out at 15. Half. That wasn't the, the the banner. It was damn. Look at the bonds. I missed that. Or watch out. Or look at the DAX. You know all that stuff. And it was the 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 uh, exhale and stuff that you would get. You don't get that when there's no floor, no office. So Robin, I think, uh, yeah, Trevor addressed that. Let, let us know if you got any more questions. Good question, though, by Al and, and Jeff. Can the footprint show how the big lots are positioned inside the box? Yes. This is like a, it could be, and it's covered in the, in the course, but I will tell you that if you look at my footprint, you'll see that... Um, the bigger orders, look at the bottom. This is what the bottom of this is, by the way. All right, now I won't see any orders. See where the big seller comes in? Right here. What's important about big selling and buying, Greg, is what the heck the market does when that big selling and buying is recognized. Because what I like the most in qualifying execution, and now... What, there wasn't a big, this is overnight, that's why I don't see it. Right here, here's a good one. Here's a big buyer, I'm sorry, seller. And just take a look at this, 192. And that's not huge, but someone comes in and hits the market at 83 half. That all of a sudden is another hand that comes out of the monitor and taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, if they can't go down soon, they're going to pop. And it tells you the price that's going to happen at. As soon as they get above 84 quarter, if you're looking at my screen, they're going to pop because the big seller couldn't get what a big seller should be able to do in a market, and that is to get it to go lower. Same thing here, 335 come in, 258. Why the hell can't the market go down? And you see it rallies. So that's a way to use big buyers and sellers. So Joe left, but it's a good question. Did he leave? He says, do you offer courses in price action and trend line trading? Price action, yeah. Trend line trading, you could throw trend lines everywhere and then use the price action you would learn to qualify them. But that track five is all about price action. That's what's cool about it. So Jeff says, and he's in both. He's in the edge, and, he, and he's, uh, he's fitting the trading room into his edge and, and that's the experience he's getting from it is the execution of the education. I'm glad you like it. Selling the top of a range example would increase the chance of a break down. Well, no, it depends. If there's a lot of selling at, at, at the top of the range, you don't know if, if that's going to stay the top of the range. And if, there's, if it's not an immediate move down to the low of the range and you identify selling, look out above. Greg. Now, Niels. Aren't a lot of big guys masked by their algos, which divides them into 500 a lot? Yes. This does, don't mistake this for being big guys who know what they're doing. 
the way the CME reports it, it could be a lot of little guys that come in at the same millisecond. You see? So you're right. A lot of big orders are, are broken up into smaller increments to hide, but when a bunch of orders come out at the same millisecond above a certain amount that we have filtered here, and that's your user, that's your choice of what you think is a big order in your market. That's, what's it, that's what you're seeing here. So the dynamic is still the same. If uh, just a lot of selling came in and the market got absorbed, it's punching a guy in the face and he doesn't flinch. And I'm not as tough as Trevor. He'd stick around and keep fighting the guy. I run. Is the chart today, I'm not sure if I understand that, John, is the chart today trading? I think I went, uh, it wasn't live because the market was closed, and I was, if that's what you were asking. Nick asks, how do you know that big seller, 192, at the 1883 price area was not selling to close? It doesn't matter, but that's a good point. Like, he could be opening up a position, and he becomes a buyer, right? And more buying means chances to go up. If he's selling a position, think about it, he's no longer, he no longer has to sell the position. So when you shake the tree and the sellers fall out, there's less sellers above, it's easier to go up. So it's either one of two things, more buyers or less sellers, both you need for a rally. Does that make sense to you? It's a good question, but it doesn't matter if he's opening or closing a position because he's either there's less sellers now in the market because he's closed, or there's more buyers because he opened, and he turns into a buyer to cover the position. It's all about the reaction of the market when it gets hit with that sell or buy order. All right. I got this long list. I haven't. Is that the last? Is Neil's the last? Not, what's the last one? Yeah. Um, no, you... I think you just got the last one. I'm not really seeing any others that. Hey, Ron, let me answer Ron. Oh, it's a question. He lives across the street from my brother. I was just there, Ron, uh, Sunday or Monday. No, Sunday. I should have went over and seen you. Does any, he has a question. Does everyone in the community trade pretty much the same way? For example, using the same systems or indicators, or do you see traders in the community doing many different things? Here's the thing. There's not anyone using indicators or, you know, like really um, things that are too far from what is taught. But I don't teach a stringent strategy, and so it reminds me exactly of a prop firm. Not everybody traded the same, exact same way, because no one's going to trade exactly the same. They have different looks or opinions, but there's, there's overlap. There's a lot of overlap, but nobody's trading the same. They're looking at different ways to see the same thing is a good way to put it, but they're interested in order flow, timing, and, but yeah, there's guys that'll have different tools, you know, but the focus, Ron, is more eyes and ears on the right stuff, you know. Yes, you guys could review. I know Trevor just answered Kevin, but it is recorded. It will be mailed out to you guys to watch it. Also, we put in a link to a five-minute video. Watch that. Uh, you guys want to fill out the form, and I'll clean up any other questions. You want to pop that form in, Trevor, to the uh, special webcast and bonus videos. Yeah. Fill it out, guys, and, and there's some stuff in that 25-minute webcast that I didn't cover in this. You'll see a promotion that we have at the end of this, but it's a free membership to get some more information about what the program is about. David, good question. Other markets that we're looking at when I'm trading the S&P, the E-minis, are many. And this is what's important about like-minded community. I'll give you an example. Well, first of all, do you trade the E-minis? I, I uh, look at the Russell, oil, the NASDAQ, the DAX in Germany, the bonds, the yen, but not all at the same exact time. 
and that's what's important about the help I've given other people is someone will tell me, hey, Anthony, the Euro let that move, or Anthony, oil's leading right now, you know, um, or I'll tell them that. So those are markets that they're all kind of at different times take the baton of leading or lagging, you know. Sometimes, like I mentioned early on in this, before this webinar started, Apple gave just an enormous opportunity for an effortless trade, selling it after it popped. It popped after earnings, and then they got slammed, and NASDAQ and the ES were at a premium. So you sell it, you give it a couple seconds to go down, and they flushed them five, six handles, which is a huge move in the aftermarkets. It's a good move during the day in the short amount of time that broke like six points, the ES yesterday of Apple. So sometimes, Dave, individual stocks. But that's what's important. If, you, if I had to have all my eyes and ears, I'd be missing something. That's what's, you know, being around guys that keep you abreast, privy to, to what's, what's, uh, What's the right stuff, you know? I don't have guys, I don't have the community, I don't have guys telling me, hey, Anthony, the 200 exponential moving average just crossed over a trend line, which is in line with a 618 Fibonacci that is the fourth wave of Elliott. And and uh, the only thing, my, my joke about Fibonacci, the only thing I like about Fibonacci is that he was Italian. Right, Trevor? <laughs> Here, so Niels follows up. The Russell's still moving. Yeah, there's talk about that, Neil. I don't want to get into that right now, but yeah, about the Russell and the contract and where it is. It's hosting on ice right now, and it's a good mark because it moves. It's not super thin, but it's not thick, and it gets spastic at times. Here, so if the Russell's shooting up, no, Dave, I would not short the ES. I would sometimes see if the S is going to get pulled up by the small caps because that was the Russell is but I would also use it to value and so this is another lesson that's in the um, in the edge and I'll draw it real quick I'm not going to elaborate too long on it but market relationships so let's say the Russell rallies that doesn't mean if it shoots up it means I have to buy or sell it but what it could mean is the Russell shoots up and the ES doesn't follow or it just lags indicative of my yellow lines that I'm drawing that gives me a clue that the ES is probably weak because if it was strong, it would have followed and been influenced by the small caps. Does that make sense? A lot of ways to use market relationships, and they all are create high probability opinions. So nobody, like, nobody would ever debate with you how you buy and value a car, right? How do you know it's cheap? Well, because you know, three other guys are $2,000 more for the same car. You got to compare and contrast and know how to do it. But good questions. But the most people do like the Russell, either to watch or to trade. Um, there is also, you know, videos talk about the 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 reversal of PNF bars, how they show, if you're looking at my webcam, how they show the, the way, the rotations, you know, so if a market is, it rallies here, it stops, it goes down, stops, and then it's consolidating. The better periodicity you have, the better and more accurate you're going to find where the stops are. If you, you just use time periodicity, a lot can happen in five-minute bars that you don't see because it just plots that five-minute period. A ton's going to happen rotationally in a 15-minute bar. So you can't just watch time period bars to find true rotations. And typically, yes, Dave, bonds are opposite stock indexes, asset allocation. The reason is, especially when, we, when we're weak, people do what with the money that they have when they sell stocks? They sell stocks, they, have, they raise capital, and they buy bonds with it because of fear. So a flight to quality, flight to safety is a phrase used. They're not doing it immediately, but that dynamic makes bonds and stocks opposite and a great head starts on trades when uh, asset allocation is at play. And most of this year it has been because we've gotten just totally beaten up uh, in the first three and a half weeks of the year.
How much does the info cross over to the people who are looking for longer time frames? Completely. You have to highlight, you look at, even if you're like investing, let's take the longest time frame. You're looking to buy a stock or get out of a stock. Where is other, if you're looking to get long a stock, then you're going to look where there's going to be potential buy stops or where shorts in that stock are going to cover. Okay? Or here's another idea. You're looking to get long a stock, or you're looking, let's call it ABC, and ABC is in a certain space, and all the other comp companies to ABC are, are, are showing you that they're weak, and ABC won't break. And you kind of compare the index with, the, with the, the sector, and you say, wow, this my timing is getting close, because this thing's ready to pop. Why? Because it won't break with its sister companies and with the index. And you look for places of, of longer time frame buy stops to find a good place to enter. Because no matter your time frame, your goal is to have the trade go your way ASAP. You think clearer, be more objective, and be playing with the house's money. You want the trade to go your way ASAP. Trading isn't buying it, taking heat, oh, that's what the business is. That's not what the business is. Taking heat is not the business. That's not your tuition. That's not the way you're going to hang on. Nobody is going to take a lot of heat and build their size to make any money in this business. Good locations that go your direction with minimal amount of heat is your goal. Any time frame. Some people do once in a while, and it's a great ancillary, the VIX. Robin's asking, especially when things pick up, Robin. John's asking about divergences. Yeah, the, the way I use the word divergences is intermarket correlations and when they diverge to find cheapness or richness. Now, I'm not talking. That's probably why the audio is gone. I'm looking at just getting some of the comments instead of questions reading real quick. Um, but let's wrap it up. There's two. Uh, our phone number. What's unique about Trevor and I is when people get us on the phone, and I know, Trevor, you've had this reaction. They're like, wow, I'm talking to Trevor. I'm talking to Anthony. That's one of our MOs is we like engaging with people who are serious. We're not calling people, but when people call in or want to talk to us, we're available. Important people are available. That's why they're important. That's one of the things that I learned from someone. He said it that he used to he used to promote Elvis. And how did he get to promote Elvis? He called his manager, and someone said, "How the hell did you get a hold of Elvis's manager?" Important people are available. So our number is in the chat box. Call it, leave a message, or you'll get a hold of us live. Email us, edge at marketdelta.com. If you got more questions, if we didn't get to some, we might have missed someone's question. And um, Dan, who's a longtime edge guy, room guy, and everything else, um, if you want to talk to whatever, it's like if you want to talk to someone that's already in the community, the testimonials that you see on most products are what? Two little quotes that say, this was awesome, I've made a lot of money on my last 10 trades. We don't do that. We let you talk to the person instead of reading print and a guy's first name and last name initial, or first, first letter of his last name. So that's what, that's what it's about. Dan says they could call him. So just give, me, uh, give us a call if you've got questions. You'll get an email with a follow-up with the offer and the payment button. If you go online and pay, it's going to be at the at the uh, the higher price. So use the button. Are you going to put that button in in the chat or did you? Yeah, already? I posted them. I'll, I'll do it again. Um, here's right. the. You'll also get an email with it. Yep. All right, guys. So what I'm saying is, you got plenty of opportunity to get a hold of us and ask questions if if you want. 
and then take it from there. But hit those links, fill out the form if there's one. Watch that five-minute video. It's entitled, Where the Stop Started. If you don't do anything else, do that. We appreciate you guys stopping by. And um, Trevor, thanks again for the introduction. And we'll see you guys hopefully in the edge and everything else. Trevor, I'll see you in a couple seconds. But thanks right. again, and guys, have a good night. Yep, see you guys.